um, chapter three, which is containers, tools, mechanics, and safe work practices. Um, so if you look at there are objectives we have here, you have like selecting the right containers, creating a floral bow, which you'll find another video for later. Um, use floral design tools properly and safely. Hydrate, fit, and secure fresh floral foam. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this one that that's, there's a lot of different tools. So basically your foundation for a floral design is selecting the right container and they have some goofy ones on this slide for you to check out. Um, but choosing hard goods is a piece that is really important. Um, containers you have, basically they're part of the foundation. They're, they're typically the water vessel. Um, they're going to also provide stability for the arrangement and can act as a keepsake. The whole providing unity, a lot of times they'll have it so it, you know, goes with the color scheme or maybe is a piece that, you know, people are really going to enjoy because it's a certain color. Glass containers. Glass containers can be challenging if you notice when you look at these arrangements, you can see the stems and everything in the water. So if the water is discolored, if you have leaves below the um, glass in the water line here, they're going to get rotten and stink and not make your arrangement a pleasing one. So a lot of times they'll try to avoid having leaves in that area. Um, a safety tip for you if you're handling glass, be careful. You can see this guy's got both hands in the container. Um, you always have to be cautious with that and making sure you're not picking them up by the rim. They're pretty easy to break. Bacterial growth. So here they have some shells and anthurium um, all located in the water. You have to be careful with that because it will cause bacterial growth. If you had this for an event, maybe something funky for one night, not a big deal. Um, but you have to be cautious about that. You can use decorative pieces in a you know clear glass vase, make it look kind of unique. Mechanics, so you may be thinking mechanics, what does that have to do with flowers? It has a lot to do with it because if you don't have things balanced correctly, um, it's hard to make the arrangement stand up. So what they have done here, they've taken some floral tape and they actually made a grid. This grid's gonna help plants stand up in the places that you want them to. That's the challenge with working with a vase sometimes is that you know it's hard to get the flowers to stand upright. Um, there are some pre-made grids that you can buy. A lot of places will make them themselves, but it also helps to, the, you know, to interlace those stems and keep the flowers where you want them. All right, plastic containers, beautiful part. They're cheap, lightweight, many different colors, lots of different textures and styles. And then ceramic, they're versatile. Um, they're, you know, once again, lots of different colors. They can add character. They add some texture, lots of different shapes and sizes. They are breakable though, that's a downside. Baskets, if I'm using a basket, the tricky part is, um, if I fill this full of water, it's gonna leak, it's gonna rot. So a lot of times you'll have to have a liner inside of it. They are typically in inexpensive. They add a different element to your floral arrangement. Um, they're natural. So it kind of depends on what the feel of the arrangement is sometimes too. Metal containers. So metal containers are also nice. They can also be a keepsake. They're reusable. There's lots of different styles of them, many different shapes and sizes. And when I look at this, even the picture itself, I think like rustic farmhouse decor, they have lavender stuck into that metal pail, um, can be kind of unique that way. Now, if I'm choosing hard goods, hard goods are one of those pieces that have a shelf life. You can have them around for a long time compared to the flowers themselves. Um, that includes the containers, ribbon, tools, and this basically these slides go through each of these items. Um, so the grids, we already know it keeps the, the stems from falling to the side of the container. They're usually waterproof tape. And this is showing you the step-by-step -step of how to do that, and we're not going to be doing that right now. We'll see if we even get to that with this course. Uh, choosing a ribbon. Choosing a ribbon is a big piece too. Obviously, if you are a prom goer, you know like my dress is this color and I want my, you know, my flowers and my ribbon to match my dress um, can be a pretty big topic there. So it can also add as an accent. This piece almost looks like a piece of mesh or kind of close to burlap, but it can add color, add texture, and even pattern to the arrangement. The types of ribbon. So when you watch the bow making video, you'll notice I mention acetate satin. Um, that's the most common and cheapest ribbon you can use. There's 
also nylon. There's double face satin. There's some sheer nylon ribbon and velvet ribbon. Some have wire in the edges and some do not. Um, they also talk on here about rope. This is raffia. And then this one is burlap. And you can use those for accent pieces too. And this is kind of an interesting piece because when you look at the wire, it's basically opposite. Um, this is showing you if you say, hey, I want to order ribbon size number three, they'll know it's five eighths of an inch. Why they can't say five eighths of an inch, I have no idea, but they know that's number three ribbon and that's what the industry has come up with. Um, and this is the step by step piece from your textbook on how to make a bow, and I'm going to skip through these. You can pause it and come back to it. It's also laid out in your textbook in chapter three itself. There's a couple different diagrams. So if you want to use those, you can come back to this. Um, so the foundations of making a floral design. So first off, you got to select the correct tools, choose the appropriate mechanics. And then it talks about cutting, binding, piercing, construction, and tools for adhering. So if I'm cutting, there's several different ways I can do that. They show you on here, there's basically your you know basic pocket knife. This almost looks like a paring knife. The biggest piece is to make a clean cut. Use these to cut stems. You don't want to pinch the stem. If I pinch the stem of a flower, it can no longer absorb water, and I've totally defeated the purpose of the arrangement. Um, it also helps save time in the design if you have a really sharp, clean tool. Uh, in the classroom, we have some sharp shears that look like scissors, but they don't pinch stems, which are really nice. And this is showing you, obviously, you have to be careful. It looks like this person's cutting themselves. You basically use the thumb as a guide and pull downward. You don't cut your thumb. It's a it's a no-no. Um, so it's showing you more of how you would do that. The other hard piece, if you're left or right-handed, that's all going to be different for you, too. So cutting tools, they have box cutters for cutting cardboard boxes that your flowers come in, floral shears for cutting flower stems. There's some multi-purpose shears excuse me, shears for cutting light gauges of wire. Uh, ribbon shears should only be used to cut ribbon. That's like I told you guys when you were in here, do not use your uh, fabric scissors to cut wire. You're going to get some enemies. You could use regular fabric scissors to cut ribbon. Ribbon is obviously fabric um, unless it has the wire in it. Make sure you're asking permission before you just grab a pair of scissors. Um, floral snips are also used to cut lightweight wire. This is showing you stem strippers. Stem strippers are super nice and save on your hands. Uh, they're used, if you think about if you've gotten a rose before, they have thorns naturally on them, and you can see that in this image. So all you do with these strippers is you basically wrap it around the stem and pull downward, and it takes all that yucky stuff off of it, and it does it very quickly. This is just showing you some examples of shears. There's bypass, parrot, anvil. Um, and we're not going to get into too much of that. It's just sharing some of the options because even though you're like, I'm working with flowers, you can have branches and stuff like that in floral design too to add some different character. Uh, wire cutters, use these to cut wire. Um, you can use them on silk flower because they have wire in them. Be sure you do that. Or things like pre-made garland, which also has wire. Um, don't use them to cut fresh flowers. You're going to smash the stems. It's not going to be pretty. This is stem tape. Um, if you notice, it looks really thin because it is. It's basically like those um, crepe paper ribbons that you might have had at a birthday party, and it's got paraffin wax on it. It's made to stick to itself, um, and we'll deal with that when we get to making boutonnieres and corsages. Florist wire. Florist wire has several different, you can buy it in big long lengths. You can buy it on a paddle. Um, there's several different gauges too. And some of them, it says chenille stems. Some of them are wrapped in like a cloth um, and they can have paper covered wire. Glue guns, glue guns, uh, obviously a really handy tool in the industry. There's also some pan glue that's available too. It basically looks like a little electric skillet. So this is the skillet that you're seeing here that has glue in it. These are very dangerous. They're super hot. These are little, it looks like little, almost like those silica packets you get, or maybe like mustard pouches or something from a restaurant. That's actually glue that that's how it's sold. And then when you heat it up in the skillet, it melts. Um, and you can see they're sticking floral foam in it. They're doing that because they can stick it in the container and then it's not going to move. This one, I really like this floral adhesive. This is one of the cooler, newer things that they've come out with. This is actually for 
um, gluing fresh flowers together. If you took hot glue and put on a fresh flower, you're going to make a really gross spot on it. You might actually cause it to rot faster. Um, you can use it for lots of different things. So it works really well. And they have miscellaneous tools. Obviously, if I get called up and they say, hey, we want you to build an arbor for our wedding and we're gonna put flowers on it and there's nothing there, you're gonna need some different tools than you would on an everyday basis. Uh, lots of different things like hammer, they have a staple gun on there, measuring tape. Obviously, if you're going to a venue and you need to figure out, okay, this table is going to be, it's you know maybe it's three feet by six feet, what kind of an arrangement can I make that's gonna fit that so it doesn't, it's not too large for this space. Um, they also talk about the, you know, the whole idea of selecting the appropriate things. It's part of your foundations for floral design. Um, oh, big piece here. Your mechanics should be hidden. You will hear me say time and time again, hide your foam. I should not look at a floral arrangement and be able to see through the flowers and see foam. Um, you shouldn't be able to see the wire in it. We want to have the illusion that that's really cool. It's a beautiful piece and you almost have to wonder how it was created. So floral foam, floral foam. My biggest pet peeve is that you'll go to Walmart and look at floral foam, especially, um, the hydro, the hydrophilic foam, which is the water stuff. It's basically when you put it in the water, it gets really heavy because it absorbs it all. It's a beautiful product because it gives water to the plant when you stick the stem in there. Um, the hydrophobic stuff is dry, but my biggest pet peeve with the hydrophilic foam is people pet it at stores. They leave little fingerprints in it, and then it doesn't always absorb water correctly after that. Um, this is just showing you that's the fresh floral foam. Oasis is the brand that makes it. There's other brands out there too. Uh, and this is showing you soaking. If you're soaking floral foam, the biggest no-no is to push the floral foam down. You do not want to do that. It can actually cause an air pocket. Just set it in the water, let it do its thing, and it'll become heavy and saturated through the core of it. See, this is showing you the dry core that you do not want. So don't pour water on top of it. Just set it on top of the water, let it sink, don't push it down, all no-nos. Um, we're going to skip through this because we're not going to deal with that at this point. That's just showing you anchoring and adding water. And obviously there's your liner in a basket on this one. And this is showing you if I'm putting foam in a container, I got to anchor it somehow. You could be a parallel making an X. Just be aware wherever you put tape, it's going to be really hard to get a floral stem in there. There's gluing. All right, wire mechanics, they have chicken wire and decorative wire on here. Wires become much more popular. They do almost like jewelry designs in certain pieces, which is super cool. So you can see this kind of looks like a bracelet, and they've added some little pincushion mums to it. This might look like something that, you know, like a torch. <laughs> it's actually um, a bouquet holder. Um, there's many different shapes and sizes. This would be like for a bridal bouquet. Um, and some are actually more comfortable to hold than others, which might sound kind of silly, but if you're in a, you know, ceremony, it's going to last a long time. That's kind of important. All right. Oops. I'm gonna go back here. So water tubes and water picks, these are kind of unique where if I'm given a bouquet and it's not in foam, they can have water and they stick the stem in the top here. There's a hole you can stick the stem in, and this is meant to hold water. Some of these are pointy because you can actually stick them in another arrangement. Um, uh, in dispensables, they have anchor, um, uh, pins. They also have corsage pins. That's what these are. Um, and then the T pins. Some of these are just designed to help hold greens to an arrangement. We're going to skip over the armature piece because we're not going to be doing that. Um, kind of cool, but we don't have the ability to do that right now. Safety is a big piece. So... Uh, just keep that in mind that you have to be very cautious, personal safety. There's also the piece called um, ergonomics. You need tools that fit you and your stature. This is a big piece too. Like if my work table is not tall enough, I need to find something that helps me. Also anti-fatigue mat if I'm going to be working on concrete a lot because your legs will get tired and you'll notice that if you're standing all day. And obviously you're dealing with sharp stuff. Please be careful and uh, make sure you have band-aids on hand. Uh, but that is basically chapter three in a nutshell. So that's your tools, that's your safety. Uh, you guys will find some more. You're gonna have a Quizlet with some tool identification going on. So enjoy, that was chapter three.